welcome to Steph Time. My name is Stephanie and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this sweater. It is the penny pullover and it is my very first pattern. <laughs> I'm so excited, I don't have words. That's right, I'm releasing my first ever sewing pattern for you guys, I'm really excited about it. It's been a really fun process making this pattern for you. It is a unisex, vintage inspired, raglan sweatshirt pattern. It ranges in size 30 inch bust to 60 inch bust. Because it is unisex, there are definitely some mods that I, I will recommend in this video for you based on your measurements. Yeah, I think it's really fun. There are different mods that you can make, like this color blocking here, as well as omitting a waistband cuff, cropping it, omitting wristband cuffs. There are lots of little things that you can do for this pattern that make it unique to you. I'm really excited to share this with you guys finally. So without further ado, let's get into the construction and everything that you need to get the pattern for yourself will be in the description box below. If you like this video, make sure you like it. And if you want to follow along my sewing and crafting journey, make sure to subscribe. Love having you here and let's get into it. All right, I've got my fabric here. It is a stretchy rib knit and I've got my pattern pieces cut and ready to go. And I'm going to start by cutting out my bodice pieces on the fold of my fabric. Since I used a rib knit, seeing the grain line was very easy. But basically you just want your largest amount of stretch to go horizontally across the pattern pieces. So I'm cutting out my bodice pieces and they're looking real cute. You will need two sleeve pieces. My favorite way to do this is by folding the fabric in half and cutting out two mirrors of each other. If your fabric width or your size of the pattern does not allow this, just cut them out individually. Just make sure that they're mirrors of each other by flipping the pattern piece over. All right, for the waistband, wrist cuffs, and neckband, you can either use the fabric you're already using or you can use ribbing. If you plan to use your self fabric, make sure that the largest amount of stretch is going against the grain line marked on the pattern piece so that you have the largest amount of stretch going horizontally. All right, and so before we begin, we're just gonna mark into our seam allowance a little bit, our notches and center front on our front bodice piece. And you'll want to mark all of the notches on all of the pieces as well as with chalk or with tailor soap mark the front and back bodice pieces so that they are discernible. The front and back notches do line up, but sometimes I still get confused, so marking it with chalk does help. So we are lining up the shoulder seams now with front bodice and the right sleeve, right sides together. We are pinning along the edge, making sure that our notches are lined up and making sure the edge of the fabric is also lined up. Next, we will be doing it with the left sleeve as well. And once we have this all pinned up, we will take it to our serger or our sewing machine to sew along the edge. Whether you're using a serger or a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch, our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So keep that in mind because it is a quite scant seam allowance, but I wanted to do this so that you could use your serger and it's super easy to just get that quarter of an inch seam allowance. So once we have both of these seams finished and the left and right sleeves connected to the front bodice, we will then, right sides together, attach the other side of the sleeves to the back bodice. It's pretty much the same process. Um, you're just connecting the shoulder seams and sewing that with your serger or your zigzag stitch. Once you're done sewing, you'll want to iron your seam allowance towards the bodice or towards the sleeves, depending on where you want your top stitching to be. This is a fun way to add contrasting top stitching. And speaking of top stitching, my favorite way to do this is with a twin needle. And this is how you install a twin needle. You just take out your regular needle and put in the twin needle. And you'll also have to thread your machine for a twin needle as well. Optionally, if you don't have a twin needle and you don't wanna use it, you can just use a zigzag stitch to top stitch. That's totally cool. Or you can omit top stitching altogether. If you are going to use a twin needle, you will need two spools of thread uh, so that you can have two threads through your machine to thread the twin needle. So here I'm using one spool of thread to thread an extra bobbin on my machine so that I can have two spools. How many times can I say spool and thread and bobbin? I don't know, but that's what I'm doing here. And then you're just going to thread both of those through your machine at the exact same time, the same way you'd thread a normal machine. And then you're going to thread each needle individually and leave the threads towards the back of the machine. And then you're ready to go. 
All right, now we are using our twin needle. So I'm setting my stitch length to a little bit longer than usual. And I'm making sure that if my machine has a twin needle setting that I'm using it. And I'm making sure that whichever way I press my seam allowance that it is flat and pressed all the way in that direction as I'm sewing. But you'll just wanna take it slow. And you're gonna do this on every one of our seams that we just made. All right, and this is what it should look like after you've top stitch everything. And next we are going to prep all of our cuffs. So we are folding together, right sides together, our neck band and sewing the short edge with our serger or zigzag stitch. And we are going to also do this with the waistband cuff and the wristband cuffs. We are basically forming a circle with each one that we do. I would recommend doing this all at once just to save time throughout you know, your construction process. All right, now that we've got all of those ready, we are going to fold them in half, kind of hot dog style, but we're going to fold our seam allowance to the left and to the right respectively so as to not make that seam line really bulky. We're gonna pin that in place and then we are going to pin the entire cuff into quarters. So we're gonna put a pin directly across from the pin that we just placed at the seam and then we are gonna fold it in half again, lining up the pins that we just placed to find the other quarters. So we're gonna pin those as well. If you're doing wrist cuffs and a waistband, you'll need to do that to those pieces as well. So go ahead and do them now, get them out of the way. It'll save you time later. Here's what it'll look like to prep the wrist cuffs. Same dealio, hot dog, or I guess would this ham be hamburger? I don't know. If you're not doing wrist cuffs or waistband, go ahead and skip ahead. But this is what that'll look like. Same process for all of them, super easy. Next, we are going to divide the neck hole into quarters as well by lining up the seams that we previously made and lining up the pins that we placed to find the other quarters. There are some helpful videos in the description box. All right, so we're gonna flip that garment over to the wrong side and we're going to line up the pins that we just placed at center back and the, the seam line of the neckband. And we're gonna pin that in place. And then you're gonna pin at all of the other quarters, like so. And next we are going to go in between each pin and find the middle spot between those two pins and pin it there and then find the middle spot between those two pins and pin it there until all of the fabric is evenly distributed between pins throughout the neck hole. But this is what it should look like and we're gonna take that over to our serger or our machine. Um, I like to remove one pin and kind of slide it under the serger to get started at center back and slowly taking out a pin as we go. We don't wanna stretch the fabric as we go, but since there's a little bit of difference between the neck band and the neck opening, you'll just want to slightly stretch that fabric to make sure that it's even. And also double checking as you go to make sure that all three layers that you're sewing through are lined up at the edge so you don't miss any. And you're also going to iron this seam allowance towards the bodice and we're also going to top stitch this down using your twin needle or your cover stitch machine. All right, that's what we're looking like and now we're folding it right sides out and we're going to press that towards the bodice and we're gonna top stitch that down. As I'm sure you can tell, a lot of the steps are very similar and they will continue to be very similar as we add the wristbands and the waistband. All right, so now we are going to sew along the side seam and we are going to pin at the wrist, at the waist, and at the underarm seam to make sure that is all lined up. So we're gonna find the middle point between those two pins, then the middle point between the next two pins, again, until all of the fabric is evenly distributed. There shouldn't be too many discrepancies here. It should line up pretty nice. All right, and we're taking that to our serger or machine, and we are sewing along the edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, now we're going to quarter our sleeve opening to attach our quartered sleeve cuffs that we made earlier. 
Optionally, you can leave this unfinished or fold in hem. To attach the cuffs, we're gonna slide the cuff in and line the seams up together, pin it, and line up all of our pins and evenly distribute that fabric like we have for all of the other cuffs. And this is what it should be looking like, looking awesome. Let's take it to the serger, shall we? You know the drill, we're gonna serge it or we're gonna sew it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around and then iron the seam allowance towards the sleeve. An optionally top stitch with a twin needle or a zigzag stitch or don't. Listen, it's your sweater. Looking so freaking good. And then we're gonna move on to the waistband if you wanna do this. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same process if you're gonna attach the waistband. So instead, I'm gonna talk about some options that you could do instead of the waistband, like leaving a raw hem or just folding and sewing with a zigzag stitch. Listen, the option is yours, the world is your oyster. And I really feel like changing the look of the waistband really changes the whole look of the sweater, so have fun. Oh look, and here I am top stitching that as well. All right, and when you are done, you're gonna trim all your little threads and then you're gonna give your sweater a good press. With the twin needle, you may experience some waviness in the fabric after top stitching. Um, using some steam will help with this. And it will change depending on your fabric, your fabric stretch, or if you used ribbing. So just give it a good press, give it some steam, and admire your brand new penny pullover. Ah, so gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really couldn't be doing any of this without your support. Um, so I really appreciate you watching and following along with my pattern making journey. I hope that you enjoyed this pattern. It is seriously one of my favorite sweaters and I have made it in a bunch of different versions and I love them all equally. So I hope that you can find the same enjoyment out of this pattern. Definitely comment down below if you plan on making it, what you plan on making it out of. I would love to know. And the link to the pattern will be in the description box below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, thank you so much.